This is the intersection between neuroscience and graphs and Eulerian paths. A graph is a collection of nodes and edges where the edges connect to vertices. These nodes and edges must all be connected to be a part of the same graph. In other words, edges are made up of a pair of nodes. Nodes and edges can represent many different things. For example, a node could represent a subway stop while the edges represent the path that the subway takes between them. Here we have an image of a graph that says hi, but the purple dots are the nodes and the red lines are the edges. There is no hanging node or edge and all of it is connected to create a complete graph. An adjacency matrix is essentially a matrix used to showcase a finite number of graphs with numbers. It shows whether vertices are adjacent to each other or not. This is a sector of data structures. Within the adjacency matrix, there are zeros and ones, as you can see, to use to represent where the vertices are. In the graph below on the left, there is a square adjacency matrix highlighting each vertex. We can read it as such. There is an edge between node zero and node one. There is also a node between node zero and node two, node three, and node four. There is not an edge between node zero and node five. We can also see this in the graph on the left. Because there is a zero for five, there is no node between zero and five. Oftentimes we label the nodes using letters in order to make it less confusing. On the left, there's a graph showcasing the edges that we labeled on the right and the nodes from zero to five. A Eulerian path is a form of a graph in which each edge is used exactly once. One way to think about this outside the realm of computer science is with the bridges of Konigsberg. In this scenario, we needed to figure out how to get to each landmass by crossing each bridge just once. The landmasses served as the nodes while the bridges acted as the edges. We found that if we have two or fewer nodes with an odd degree, we will find a Eulerian path because we're able to start at an odd node and also end at one. It's also important to note though, that even though we can only use each edge once, we're able to visit the nodes multiple times. So if there are two or fewer nodes with an odd degree, we can have a Eulerian path. In this image, we can see that there are just two odd nodes, nodes three and four, and therefore we have a Eulerian path that we outlined with red arrows. We start at node three, and then we end at node four, both of which are the odd nodes. Now transitioning into the more neuroscience aspect of this, we will be looking at the structure of a typical neuron. Neurons are the basic cells of the nervous system. They communicate with each other through an electrochemical process called the action potential. This action potential, or a signal, travels from the dendrite, as you can see on the left, and it follows down the cell, down the axon, and ultimately ends at the axon terminal. This signal hits each Schwann cell once and in between passes by the nodes of Ranvier. The signal is called an all or nothing response due to the fact that once the signal hits a specific threshold, it must fire. Axon terminals then are told to act upon their command. For example, one command may be releasing neurotransmitters into the synapse, which is the gap between presynaptic cells axons and postsynaptic cells dendrites. This postsynaptic cell picks up on the neurotransmitters and continues to potentially fire an action potential. Ultimately, this is how neurons communicate. The action potential is an electrical signal that occurs between two neurons. When neurotransmitters bind to the receptors of dendrites on the neuron, they have a depolarization effect. When it reaches threshold, which is at a specific voltage, sodium channels open and positively charged sodium ions enter. The positivity creates the action potential, which then travels down the neuron. At the peak, potassium channels open and sodium channels close. Potassium ions then leave the cell, which causes the cell to repolarize. When the cell reaches resting potential, potassium channels are closed and it is ready to be activated again. The signal that was created by the action potential travels, travels down the cell to release neurotransmitters. Once again, this signal is an all or nothing response, meaning that once the cell reaches threshold, the signal will fire regardless of any other circumstances. So in connecting graphs, Eulerian paths, and adjacency matrices with all of neuroscience we just talked about, we thought we would look closely at the path of a neuron. In order to represent this, 
we made an extremely simple adjacency matrix in which each edge connects each node once, just as it does with neurons. On this image on the right, you can see the cell as it travels from each node using just one edge. In a way, you can call this a Eulerian path because it uses each edge just once. And as you can see, the first and last node have an odd degree and the rest have even degrees. So when you start at the odd node, you end at an odd node as well. So theoretically, this is a way to interpret this neuroscience concept as a computer science concept using graphs, adjacency matrices, and Eulerian paths, which is fascinating.